Good morning. Welcome to the presentation of the Blessed Virgin Mary as we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you're visiting today, we welcome you and invite you to worship with us again. Please rise as you are able for our opening hymn, number 619, God Whose Almighty Word, number 619. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Say to those whose hearts are frightened, Be strong, fear not. Here is your God, he comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag. Then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes to your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here please, while you say to the poor one, stand there, or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, 
Did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again, Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears, and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephetha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. My dear brothers and sisters, have you ever wondered why the Mass parts are what they are? Why we do what we do at the beginning of Mass? When we come in, we do the sign of the cross, which is always beautiful because we bless ourselves in our Lord's name. But then why then do we open up by doing the penitential act? Why do we go to, why do we start that way and then follow up with the Gloria? Have you ever asked yourself that? Is it just because we think it flows good? I think that sounds good, so let's just do that, right? It's like music. You you build up to it. That's true, it is like music. If you reflect on it, on why we do it, But why do we do it? Why do we start off by doing the penitential act? Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And then right after that say, glory to God. All the same reason why, as we heard in the gospel, when we see that man who was deaf come to our Lord and who was unable to speak well, as he comes to our Lord and seeks healing, after he's healed, what does he do? He gives, he gives God praise, right? And so by his actions, we, we too imitate. Because when we come here at Mass, before this altar, what are we doing but saying, Lord, I need you, right? 
That's why I'm here. I need you. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. That's why we come before you, because of our brokenness. And we need you in our lives so that we may become more like you. And so that whatever we carry in our hearts, we can give to you as an offering so that we too may be healed if that's what we are looking for in our lives. And so that's what we do when we come here. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned, that I have greatly sinned. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Because it's only when we can do that before our Lord can we truly be thankful for the blessings that we receive in our lives as this man who was healed in the gospel shared with us, that as soon as his ears were opened, his mouth was healed, what did he do? But he used it to proclaim praise to God, and so we do the same thing. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. That's probably not what he said, but I'm sure the words are very similar, right? And the beautiful thing about that, my dear brothers and sisters, is like Jesus was telling him, don't tell anyone. Don't tell anyone what I did for you. But it's like, Lord, come on, be real. I wasn't able to speak in the first place, and now you want me to try to hide that fact from people? How can I not but give you praise for what you have done for me? How can I not but give you praise for what you have done for me? And my dear brothers and sisters, he continues to work in our lives, right? He continues to work in our lives, but we need to be in a place, in a disposition, so that we can receive and see how blessed we are, how he has touched our lives, right? It's easy for us in our lives to look to other things and talk about other things in our life, right? So one of those things that frequently comes up during this time is, oh, the great Minnesota get-together. Right? What a beautiful time to come together as a state, as a community, and just to experience the many different cultures that we have, the many different types of foods on a stick, many types of deep fried things you can eat without getting sick and just even people watching and that's why I think most people go right Mike to people watch and we're quick to talk about those things and even especially this last week oh my goodness what beautiful weather we've had what gorgeous weather But my dear brothers and sisters, as quick as we are to make comments about those things, do we ever open our mouths to say, thank you, Jesus, for this beautiful week. Thank you for the rain that we have received. Thank you for the cool weather that has brought some relief to us. Thank you for all the help that you've given to those who have been hurt by the natural disasters throughout the world. Thank you for the help that you've given to those who have been hurt by violence and hatred. Are we quick to turn to God and say thank you? Because we ought to. <laughs> we ought to. And in this gospel reading and the readings that we heard this morning, we're reminded to do that. right? To give God praise right away. For he opens our hearts and he brings healing to us. And not only that, he reminds us to share that with one another, to encourage one another, right? Say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. That's what the prophet Isaiah reminds us to do. I'm going to share with you a story from this past uh, weeks, a couple weeks. 
about a former colleague of mine who I worked with before I became a priest, well, before I even went to seminary. You know, one of the blessings that I have as a priest is I'm able to walk in a company with many people in their lives, experiencing the many joys, but also a lot of hardships that people go through. And the story that I'm going to share with you is about, again, as I shared, a colleague of mine who had recently uh, uh, suffered cancer in her life. And it was very aggressive. Very aggressive. And the first thing that she did was she had her husband call, call me and said that she wanted to talk with me. And those visits that I had with her, you know, and there are a few, they were very beautiful. Because here she was, lying bedridden in front of me. And each time that I saw her, she was at a different stage. You know, definitely weakening. I can, you can physically see that. But each time that I went to visit her, the energy, the joy that she had was just so uh, beautiful, so inspiring for me. And the way that she continued to share with me the blessings in her life just showed me how much she appreciated that gift that she had been given. And that she wasn't going to allow herself to waste away without making sure that she gave praise to God to, and to remind her husband how much she loved him. And it's a beautiful thing, my dear brothers and sisters, and you know, please pray for her. She passed away this last week. But in those moments where I'm sure they think that they get a lot from me, it's like, no way. I get more from you because of how you continue to remind me how blessed you are in your life, how God has touched you. And that's a beautiful thing because the grass is always greener on the other side, right? There's always something that we can complain about, always something that is burdening us in our life. But in those moments when I see those who are truly dying, actively dying, and to see how joyful they are, how at much at peace they are in their lives. It's a beautiful reminder for me. It's like, Lord, who am I to complain when I should be giving you praise and thanksgiving for all that you've done for me? Standing here, able to walk, talk, and hear so well. And so for us, my dear brothers and sisters, how do we respond when God has touched you in your life? How have you responded when God has touched you in your life? How have you given him praise and glory? And much more important, how have you touched others by the blessings that you have received? You know, it's not a mistake that in the gospel reading, we, when we heard of Christ encountering this person, he took him to the side, right, away from everyone, because our Lord wanted a personal encounter with him. He wanted to have that intimacy with him, which he desires with every one of us. He desires intimacy with each and every one of us. And it's not also a mistake that that encounter took place in this place called the Decapolis. Deca meaning ten. It's kind of like a port where many towns and villages come together. So it's not a mistake that this happened here so that the whole world can see this man healed and hear him walking about, able to hear and speak clearly. And so for us, it's easy for us to come to church and say, glory to God in the highest and peace to people on earth. But when we leave here, do we still say that? And that's what we are called to do. That is what we are called to do to go out to the world and spread hope and be a light to those around us, to dispel the fear and anxiety that hangs over each and every one of us, especially during these days. That is what we have been called to do when we come here before the Eucharistic table as we approach the bread of life, Christ himself. 
And so when we receive this heavenly food, my dear brothers and sisters, ask for courage. Ask to be bold in your faith and your love for Christ. That those whom you encounter today, you will bless by what you say and what you do. We come together as a family to profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing how much our Heavenly Father loves us and desires us to come to Him as His beloved children, we bring to Him now these petitions. That God's salvation may reach out to the ends of the earth through the ministry of the Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that the actions of all those who govern and legislate will imitate the Lord who is just in all his ways. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation over this Labor Day weekend, that our work will be directed to God's glory, that those seeking workers will find the help they need, at the, and the unemployed will obtain suitable work. The word, oh, let's pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the courage this week to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ to the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That participation in the Archdiocesan Synod will help us communicate more openly with each other and strengthen the domestic church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the homebound and shut in may be drawn deeper into the light that is Jesus with an increase of peace, hope, and joy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick and suffering, especially those who suffer from hatred and violence, may the love of Jesus strengthen their hope and give peace and healing to their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For those who have been called to the banquet of eternal life, especially Dick Nowicki, whose funeral mass will be September 9th, Maureen Hughes, whose funeral mass will be September 14th, and for those who grieve for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Donald and Maureen Hughes, for whom this mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, 
in your great love for us, you gave us your only Son to save us, to heal us, and to give us life eternal. And so we thank you, and yet we ask for more. Hear these prayers and petitions spoken and unspoken in the signs of our hearts, and please make them your own. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For our good and the good of all of His holy Church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to Your divine Majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the 
Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. 
In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. It's just a reminder that later this month, our Sin and Small Groups will be starting up so if you haven't registered, please do. Uh, the reason why we're asking for their, uh, people, uh, parishioners to register ahead of time is so that we can make sure we have enough uh, material and enough space for everyone. So uh, please encourage you to sign up so that we can know how many participants we have. A reminder that uh, because it is Labor Day weekend, our office, the chapel, and the school will be closed tomorrow. And so make sure you take time to rest. That's why we have this holiday given to us. Because work is a beautiful thing, and we all need it in our lives. It brings us dignity. That's why we, have, we take so much satisfaction in the things that we do. We need it. But also, we need to make sure we take time for a rest. And just like on the Sabbath, on today, Sunday. So make sure you take time to rest and give God thanks for the work that we have been allowed to participate in, uh, especially through the gifts that he has give, given to each and every one of us. So, next weekend... It's kind of a big deal. It's our fall festival. And last week, if you were all here, you promised that you were going to be there. Because I asked that question and you said, yep, I'll be there. So I expect to see all of you next weekend. Not just at Mass, but to hang out afterwards. Because that's what a parish does, a family does. We work together, we play together, and we pray together. Right? So we can't have all that fun if you're not there. And I'm expecting a lot of fun because this will be my first parish festival here at presentation. So, if you want to come in, well, I encourage you to come on Saturday night too. Mass will be at 4 p.m. and not 5, so that we have enough time to partay through the night. And it will start off with a taco dinner and pray for good weather because we hope to have it outside uh, in, the, in the gorgeous Minnesota weather that we've been given. Uh, and then on Sunday, after the 9.30 a.m. Mass, um, there will be, we'll continue to have other events and activities. So lots of plans for this uh, for next weekend. So please come and join in on the fun. Uh, for those of you who would like to take part in it, there's still space available for some ministries. And so please go up to the back and sign up. And don't forget to turn in your raffle tickets. You can't win if you don't turn them in. All right. So make sure you turn them in. Uh, at the end of the pews and at the entrances, you'll find this little guide to the festival. So make sure you pick one up so that you can give it to your neighbors and give it to your friends. I'll see you there. And at Mass. Don't forget Mass. That's more important. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, this has been a little bittersweet weekend uh, for me. Yesterday, I uh, began to move out uh, the rectory, not myself, but if you didn't know, Father Charlie has been living here for a number of years at the rectory. And so yesterday was bittersweet because he was, mo he was moving out and going to his new parish and becoming a pastor again. So happy for him, but sad because I really enjoyed his company in the house. So please keep in, in your prayers uh, as he transitions back into parish life. I know he's looking forward to it. But uh, also sweet too, just because uh, if you have not heard... Now, and you might have seen a couple of pre other priests hanging around around here at the house because over the summer I picked up two new uh, housemates. Uh, so Father John pa uh, Pascal, not Pascal, Father John Mitchell from St. Pascal's, the pastor, and uh, Father Joe Connolly at Garden Angels in Oakdale uh, have moved in because they don't have rectories of their own at their parishes. And so a great moment for me just to continue to have that community life here at the rectory. But again, it's a little sorrow because I'll, I'll definitely miss Father Charlie. Uh, so please pray for all of us as we continue to do, try to do God's work uh, as his ministers. Have a blessed weekend again, my dear brothers and sisters, and thank, give thanks to God always for the many blessings he has bestowed upon you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.